Well, hello! Welcome to Golf Town's virtual clinics uh, held here on the Golf Town Facebook page under the live videos. My name is Lisa Bluswick, nicknamed Lisa Longball. I will be your host for the clinics. These clinics are run every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. We just had our first clinic on Tuesday where we covered warm up and grip. I was absolutely thrilled with all the people that shared how much they're enjoying the tips, how helpful they are, all the way from Newfoundland to Victoria, British Columbia. So thanks so much for your feedback. I'm thrilled you're loving the tips. And these tips are for everyone. They're for, for beginner golfers, all the way to single digit handicaps, for men, women, juniors, I guarantee I can share tips through these clinics that will help all of you hit the golf ball longer, straighter, and better. And that's our goal. So we're all at home. We all want to, we're missing the golf season. So these are wonderful ways to catch up. So if you missed the first clinic, you can definitely uh, go onto the Golf Town Facebook page. After each video, they'll be posted there and they'll be living there. So if you missed it, please go watch it. But let's start with number two. Today, we're going to do talk about posture and ball position, two very important things to help us get ready for uh, the golf season. And I see Marianne has joined us from Kitchener. Thanks so much, Marianne. Wonderful. Uh, welcome, welcome. So let's talk about a posture posture if you have improper posture this can absolutely affect how far you hit the golf ball and how consistency so if dis how consistently you hit it so if distance and consistency are an issue you're gonna love this there's a four-step process to posture and the four-step process to posture should be number one we have to start with our posture nice and straight and tall what happens is I see a lot of golfers uh, and I see usually our men men tend, tend to have a little bit of a hunchy back or people who work at desk jobs. What happens is we get used to uh, typing on the computer or even sitting on the couch like that, so this feels more comfortable for us versus this. Well, our key in posture is we want to create a, a flat, straight spine. When we have a straight spine, we can turn around our back. The more you can create turn, and we will talk about this as we go through our clinics, the key to distance is coil and torque. You need to create turn. When you have a slouched back, it limits your turn. When your back is nice and straight and flat, look how you can turn around your spine. So this is absolutely huge. So step number one in our four step process to posture is you've got to stand up nice and tall. So that's step number one, stand up nice and tall. Step number two, we need to bow at the waist and the butt needs to st stick out. This is where my women struggle. My women tend to tuck their bums in. Somewhere along the way, a lot of women have been told, oh yeah, you want to pretend you're sitting on a chair terrible advice you do not want to do that because what's going to happen is when we tuck our bum in and, 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 and women do that now their chest is up here so they really struggle with uh, contacting the golf ball and that's going to be tomorrow's lesson so we'll talk about that but it's so important step number one stand up nice and tall shoulders back step number two bow at the waist butt has got to stick out butt sticks out step number three is easy you just crack the knees not bend the knees just simply crack the knees and step number four arms hang naturally this is a really big one a lot of people get this one incorrect because what happens is as soon as they set up especially if they set up with the driver a longer club what happens is let's say they have their golf ball they get set up in their posture so we'll go shoulders back chest out bow at the waist butt sticks out crack the knees arms hang naturally and what happens is when their golf ball is over there now they're reaching now they have this big reach towards the ball and can you see the gap in, in, in between your body. When you have arms hang naturally, what's gonna happen is you should have about a fist width of difference or distance between the butt end of the club and your body. And it should be the same for every club. Whether it's your iron, shoulders back, chest out, bow at the waist, butt sticks out, crack the knees, arms hang naturally. Whether it's your iron or whether it's your driver, it's all going to be about a fist width from your body. As soon as we start reaching for our golf ball, and especially we tend to do this with our longer clubs, especially driver, look at the gap. And what happens is, when you come through your golf swing, your body is always trying to find neutral. So when you're coming from your golf swing, your body wants to find this. But if you're already stretched out over here, it's gonna to lead to wild inconsistencies if you aren't set up properly. If you can set up in neutral, you have a much greater chance of finding neutral when you get to the ball, which means more consistent contact. So again, the key when we're making our posture is we wanna stand up nice and tall, shoulders back, chest out, bow at the waist, butt sticks out, crack the knees, arms hang naturally. And if this is not what your posture looks like, you should be doing this every single time you set up to the golf ball. So when it's finally time to get out to our season and we get out there, 
This is something that I want you to do. And this is a perfect thing to practice while we're all staying at home. This is something you can practice in your living room, in your basement. You don't even need to make a swing. I want you to have a golf club if you can, but shoulders back, chest out, bow the waist, butt sticks out, crack the knees, arms hang naturally. Okay, the next thing I get asked, oh, and I'm just saying, hey, I see Ellen and Jan, Kathy, Sue, Helen from Toronto. Thanks everyone for joining us. We sure appreciate it. All right, the next thing we need to talk about, and for all of our male viewers, I apologize, I apologize, but we need to talk to this about this for my female students, and that is, what do we do with the girls? Do we put our arms above the girls, below the girls? Where do our arms go? And I get asked this all the time. And so here's the deal. When we think about where to put our arms, this comes into our posture. We want to think arms hang naturally, okay? But what happens is women tend to be arms lifters. So what, what women are a little bit more flexible typically than their male counterparts. So what happens is they typically lift their arms versus turn and that feels really comfortable for them. So when it's time to, to decide where do we put the, put the arms, this is what I've honestly seen. I've seen people go, oh yeah, yeah, it's above the girls, it's above the girls. Well, holy cow, look at my shoulders. They're stuffed up against my chin and I'm maybe a B cup C with Victoria's Secret's help. So come on, it's definitely not above the girls. Well, I've heard it's below the girls. Well, that's just a push up bra commercial. I've heard squeeze them together, squeeze them together oh my goodness that creates tension that's the last thing you want in your golf swing and I've honestly heard oh you go one on top one underneath ladies as we know that's a mammogram we don't need that we don't need that so again where do the where do the arms go well what the arms do is the arms simply as we go through our process hang naturally but what happens and why women complain about running into the girls when they make their golf swing is because girls tend to be arms lifters but here's the magic here's the magic are you ready for this if you turn if you start your back swing if you start your back swing uh, with your shoulder versus your hands or your 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 hands or your arms which we talked about in our first clinic if you start with your shoulder here we go watch the magic Look, look, the girls come with you. The girls come with you. The girls come with you. If you're an arms lifter, you're going to bump into those bad boys every time. So again, when you're going through your posture, it's simply arms hang naturally. If you're a double D or bigger, maybe slightly underneath. But other than that, if you turn, the girls will go with you. So I, if all of you can start working on that four-step pro process to posture, I guarantee it's going to add distance to your game and more consistency. So you're going to love that. Last time we'll review it, it's stand up nice and tall, shoulders back, chest out, bow at the waist, butt sticks out, crack the knees, arms hang naturally, which should be about a fist width for every club, and we never stretch out. Here's a great tip. If your ball, if you've gone through your posture setup, shoulders back, chest out, bow at the waist, butt sticks out, crack the knees and arms hang naturally, and your ball's there, instead of reaching, what I want to see you do, literally scooch up to your ball. By scooching up to your ball, you keep your posture versus reaching for it. So you do those things, and I guarantee you'll add distance. Pat! Enlightenment! Pat had some enlightenment. I love it. And Donna from Kamloops. That's fantastic. Guy, hey, thanks for joining in. And uh, 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 that's awesome. I see Amphi has joined us. Wonderful. And Jordan. So thanks very much, everyone, for joining. Okay, so we talked about posture. What's the second thing we want to learn today? The second thing is ball position. Now, I indicated in my first video that your mind is going to go poof. And it is, because I learned this from my PGA of Canada instructor, Paul Horton. And please, I am considered, I am not considered a, a, golf, uh, inst a, um, a golf professional. I'm considered a professional golfer. I compete on the uh, uh, Golf Channel's World Long Drive Tour. I'm a sponsored athlete. Who you need to see for lessons when we get back out there on the golf course, make sure you see your PGA of Canada, LPGA, or PGA of America instructors because th those are the people that are going to absolutely help you with your game. I'm just sharing tips right now from my basement uh, as to what I've learned from my phenomenal PGA of Canada instructors, but please go make sure you go see your PGA of Canada instructor. So this is what Paul Horton taught me, and Paul Horton won the PGA of Canada uh, Coach of the Year in 2017. This was absolutely enlightening to me. I've always struggled a little bit with my iron and with my contact with my irons so this has really helped me now when I was growing up and I first learned how the ball position and let me for, let me say believe me there's many ways to skin a cat you do not need this is not the be-all end-all but I'm just showing you this if it happens to help your game fantastic so first of all I, I was taught you put the, uh, the the ball in the middle of your stance for kind of pitching wedge and then nine iron, eight iron slightly forward, seven slightly forward of that, six slightly forward, five slightly forward, you know, a hybrid fairywood, and then driver, that was non-negotiable, that's on the instep of the lead foot. So that's what I was taught. 
And I've struggled a little bit with that ironing consistency. Just giving a shout out, hey, to Cami, Cindy, Karen. Thanks everyone so much for joining. Appreciate that. So for me, that's how I learned, but was struggling with my irons. What Paul Horton taught me is he said, okay, Lisa, let's think about the golf swing. What happens is when you make your golf swing and when you make contact with the ball, you always want to, your club should be coming down. It should be hitting ball first contact. It should compress the ball, squish the ball into the grass, and then your divot comes from there. So if you ever have your divot behind your ball, you know you're, you're already having trouble with making that. So here's a great swing thought. You want to think of trapping the ball, uh, compressing the ball, and trapping, compressing, hit down on it. That's that's how we want to hit our proper uh, golf shots, especially with those irons. So you want it to hit down, trap, compress the golf ball. Okay, so here's the thing. So if we want to properly hit ball first contact, what Paul taught me is this. He said, Lisa, your lead shoulder, so the shoulder closest to the fairway, uh, where your shoulder joint is, that's the bottom of your swing. That is the, the bottom point of your swing is at your lead shoulder. So if you always want to have ball first contact, why wouldn't you just place the ball about the width of a ball behind your shoulder joint? So for my right-handed golfers, that would be above your heart or usually the logo of your golf shirt. And for my lefties, it's going to be in the middle of your pectoral muscle on, on uh, uh, your right-hand side. So basically, what he has taught me is this process. And I'm a huge fan of process, especially if you struggle with consistency on the golf course. So a pre-shot routine, which we'll discuss in one of our future lessons as well. So this is what I do to make sure the ball is always set up uh, about the ball, a ball width behind my shoulder joint, which is the lowest part of my swing. That's where I want the ball to, uh, to be fully compressed down in the grass and then our divot comes from there. So what I do is I always stand, I eyeball my ball and actually I'll use an alignment rod Alignment rods are fantastic. If you don't have one in your bag, these are awesome. You can actually buy them on uh, Golf Towns. Uh, Golf Town Online is still open. The stores are closed right now, but they're uh, retailing for $15 uh, on $15.99 right now on Golf Town. So what I do with my alignment rod, these are great to practice with. I stand with my, uh, my ball. I eyeball my ball into the middle of my feet. I simply move my lead foot, so my foot closest to the fairway, about the width of a club head. So I'm gonna move it about the width of a club head, about that ball, and then I'm going to move my back foot to comfort. So if I have a pitching wedge, my, my, it's a shorter golf club, so my back foot's going to be in a little bit more, so it almost looks like it's the middle of my stance. And if I have a five iron, my back foot's going to be back farther. But it's always the same distance from your lead foot. When I change this, this absolutely made a massive difference to, to my iron striking. So again, here's the process. You're going to put the ball uh, in between the middle of your feet, kind of eyeball it between the middle, Move your lead foot about the width of a club head uh, uh, towards, uh, towards the fairway, about the width of a club head. You're going to move your back foot to comfort, and then you just, you're setting up in your posture. So that's the ball position. Now that's the ball position for every single club in your bag, except driver. Driver is absolutely non-negotiable. It has to be off the instep of your lead foot. So let me give you a process for that. So here's your process to make sure that your driver is in the right position. So what I simply do, I go feet together, I've got the ball in the middle of my feet, feet together, and I simply move my back foot. Then I know the ball is off the instep of my lead foot all the time. What I tend to see, I tend to see golfers out there, and they have this great pre-shot routine, this great swing, so I see them come from behind their ball, they come up, they come up to their golf ball, and when they set up like this, the ball's almost in the middle of their stance, you're losing 20 plus yards by having the ball way back in your stance. By having the ball, especially for driver, it's gotta be off the instep of the lead foot. I guarantee instantly you can add distance to your game. So if your ball position for driver isn't there, that's what you need to do. So again, for driver, it's simply feet together and eyeball the ball in the middle of the feet, simply move your back foot. And I'm telling you, that's gonna add tremendous distance to all of your games. So I, I see Mike has joined us. I said, good morning, thanks Mike, thanks for watching. Oh, Manon, uh, hello, bonjour, comment ça va? <laughs> it sounds like you're joining us from Quebec, so that's fantastic. And Sandy, thanks very much. But if you follow these tips, I want you to work on your posture at home, go through that four-step process, and uh, work on this ball position. This is something you can work on in your basement just to kind of get the sense of it. And uh, I guarantee it's gonna be helping you. If you wanna know a couple little drills that you can do, if you, find that your, uh, if you find that your iron striking is still a bit struggling or you're hitting behind the ball, two drills that you can do. You can pick up your, uh, you can put your ball into the ground, into the grass, 
You can put a T right beside your golf ball. So put a ball on the, uh, on the grass, put a T beside the golf ball. Then what you're going to do is you're going to make uh, a golf shot and see where did your divot happen. Did your divot happen before the T, at the T, or after the T? So that will tell you if you're doing a good job having a descending blow, trapping it, compressing it. Another great drill if you're struggling, struggling with your irons, you can put the ball on the grass. You put a tee about an inch and a half uh, in front of the golf ball, uh, and it's got maybe just the head of the tee up above the grass. What you're going to do is you're going to make a shot with your golf club. You're going to make a shot with your golf club. If you have a descending blow, if you're hitting down on it, trapping it, compressing it, you'll brush the grass, and you're going to uh, knock that tee out of the ground. So those are two little drills that you can do once we, we get back outside and we can start playing again. But... Work on that posture, work on that ball position, and I guarantee you are going to be hitting longer, more consistent shots. So on Saturday, we've got our next clinic on Saturday. On Saturday, we are going to cover uh, more iron contact. So we're going to talk about more contact with the irons and how we can hit better golf shots with our irons. So hopefully you can join us on Saturday. But again, if you uh, can't join us Saturday, uh, as soon as the broadcast is over, it'll be posted to the Golf Town Facebook page in which you can watch it anytime. So I just want to give a shout out. I see Kay. Uh, oh, I mentioned it. Kay, I mentioned the LPGA instructors earlier in my broadcast. So that's awesome. And Harry, so, so thrilled that you're enjoying it. Suzanne, thanks for coming. And I, I have another Suzanne from Ottawa. So that's wonderful. So thanks everyone for joining. I look forward to seeing you Saturday. And hopefully these tips will help you start your season off running. So thanks very much. It's Lisa Longball signing out.